Every time I do a deed I shouldn't do Every time I say a word I shouldn't say Let me tell you what I do And it brings a blessing too I just steal away somewhere and pray I just steal away I just steal away And I ask my blessed Lord to lead the way I just steal away I just steal away I just steal away somewhere and pray Many times I found my sit in shame For some evil thought or deed along life's way But when I have tried my best And but I failed to pass the test I just steal away somewhere and pray I just steal away I just steal away And I ask my blessed Lord to lead the way I just steal away I just steal away I just steal away somewhere and pray Christ the Savior always hears and answers prayers And He gives me many blessings every day So when I have tried my best But I have failed to pass the test I just steal away somewhere and pray I just steal away I just steal away and I ask my blessed Lord to lead the way I just steal away I just steal away I just steal away somewhere and pray I just steal away I just steal away I just steal away somewhere all right. How many is glad to be in the house of the Lord today? How many remembers when you first got saved? Can you remember that? I'll tell you, that's something this old boy won't never forget when I first got saved. And I always try to open up a program like this because it brings back memories of when the Lord first come in my life. I first got saved in Danville, Virginia back in 1956. And on the way home, the grass looked greener, the, t the trees looked taller. Got home, looked like somebody painted the refrigerator a little bit whiter. My wife looked prettier. That's what happens when you get saved. You're on a pretty wife, get saved. And so we wrote this song about 50 years ago. Just tell my brother to get a part in it there. And uh, the Ed could not come because Ed's uh, broke both hips and they teaching him to walk again. We've been out there about 62 years and we ain't been in and out. We've been in. And so we uh, eased the Easter Brothers off the road about two years ago, but we still do some bookings. And so me and my wife's in a ministry and... Uh, 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 Brother Jerry wanted to come to church this morning to sing for y'all and so we're just glad to be here and uh, listen to the words of this song we wrote about 50 years ago I never thought oh, I was going to get Johnny to kick this off on I forgot I had Johnny Taylor with me I'd like to introduce Johnny I'm used to being myself you, do you want to break it off that song what gives you getting yeah, that's it I never thought that I could sing a song That would make the tears of joy roll down my face All the burdens I had carried for so long Jesus came and now my past has been erased 
And it's like watching the sun shine for the first time As the rainbow shows its color through the rain And the clover in the field now look much greener And I know my life will never be the same Unwanted in a world I could not share And from the clutches of this chilly hand Into a life of joy beyond compare And I never knew that life could be so grand And it's like watching the sunshine for the first time as the rainbow shows its color through the rain And the clover in the field now look much greener And I know my life will never be the same And I know my life will never be the same Amen! And it's never been the same, folks. Praise the Lord. So we're again. I'd like to say this is my wife Denise back here playing the bass. Now we got married about six years ago. My wife passed away, and uh, then her husband passed away, and so somehow or another God joined us together. She didn't even know she played bass. So it's a God thing today. And first time she, uh, I, when I first married her, I went to the basement and I found a bass fiddle in the basement, and I found an amplifier. She said, "Well, I hadn't picked it up in years," and. Uh, she wanted, always wanted to learn to play a bass, but her husband had the electric part, something bothered her his ears, so she didn't get to practice much. So she said she hadn't picked it up over an hour. So I, I plugged it up, and then uh, I told her to get G, and she said, well, you just get the chords you sing in and see if I can find you. So anyway, from that day, I got ringed down on my chord G, and she popped it in there, and and then one day in the store, she's looking in my little place in Mount Erie there on Main Street. She, she is uh, looking at a five-string bass, and this is the four-string here now. We trained twelve bass players in the last sixty-two years to play with Easter Brothers. And listen, if you didn't get out of ten that you practiced on, you didn't get out of them. But I can pull one right out of the hat that she's never heard, as long as I'm ringing down like this year. While I'm talking, you know, I'm ringing down. A lot of people don't know why I do that, but she's getting that in her ear right then. So once she gets that home chord, she plays it right along with me. So I, I believe it's a God thing. I believe God gave her the talent. And uh, so I'm glad to have Denise, my wife, here with us today, too. And Johnny Taylor's a special guest. Johnny played some of the first recordings with us probably 50 years, at least 50 years ago. And I think we played this church somewhere along there, didn't we, Johnny? Somewhere down. This church here, I believe we played it years ago, didn't we? Yeah, I believe we did years and years ago. Johnny first started playing with us. But anyway, Russell, you want to pick out, you say something for the good Lord and pick you out a song. Okay. Let me say I'm glad to be here. At my age, I'm glad to be anywhere. I'm 88 years old, and James back here. Now, this is my brother James. We're the, East, the two Easter brothers that's left, too, out here on the road. And James is 84, 86 years old. And uh, Wait, Let me correct that just a little bit. This body I'm carrying that you're looking at is 86 years old. But this inner man carrying him around, about 33. And he ain't going to get no older. One day I'm going to lay this body down, pick that one up the Lord's got for me, and I'm going to dance all over heaven. <laughs> Give the Lord a big hand of praise if you believe that today. Amen. <laughs> okay. I'm 88 years old, and I'm still running with the young and restless. James is 86, and he is a uh, run of the old and helpless. <laughs> you pray for him, okay. We've written about 400 gospel songs in the last 64 years, and I'll tell you, the Lord's been good to us. I wouldn't trade no, not one day of, of the years that we've spent for the Lord on the road and won a lot of souls. And uh, 
we just hold the pen and he gives the message, okay? That's the way it goes. It's all about him, not about us. And uh, uh, I, I got one here we call, just come on in and make yourself home. Let's do that one. And listen to the last verse because that's where my real message is. And uh, we call this, we used to call it the grandma song. But we call it, just come on in and make yourself at home. Okay, let's go. I used to visit Grandma out on the country farm. She always made me welcome with her words of sweetest charm. She'd see me coming down the road half a mile away. And when I'd step up on the porch, I'd hear Grandma say, Well, come on in and sit right down. I hope you're hungry too. Supper's on the table. I prepared it just for you. Her words still linger in my heart, although Grandma's gone. Just come on in and sit right down and make yourself at home. Someday I'll take a journey in the sweet, sweet by and by. I'm going to be with Jesus when he splits those eastern skies. And then I'll hear him say to me, as Grandma used to do, just come on in and sit right down, I've been expecting you. Well, come on in and sit right down, I hope you're hungry too. Supper's on the table, I prepared it just for you. He'll welcome me with open arms, words that linger on. Just come on in and sit right down and make yourself at home. Well, come on in and sit right down. I hope you're hungry too. Supper's on the table. I prepared it just for you. He'll welcome me with open arms, words that linger on. Just come on in and sit right down and make yourself at home. Just come on in and sit right down and make yourself at home. Amen. Amen. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. That's the way the, the supper up in heaven one day is going to be. The Lord's going to get set down with the, that great supper that we'll all eat together there. Amen. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Thank Give the Lord Jesus. another big Praise hand of praise if you Amen. love him today. Amen. And I'll tell you what. Uh, We've got a beautiful little song here that I'm going to share with you. Out of all the songs that we have written, Lord, give me the message out of the one I've had to do with. But an angel gave me this one. This is the only one the angel ever gave me. And I'm going to share it with you. And it don't have but a couple of verses. I hope you'll enjoy it. We call this the first sunrise. That's spelled S-O-N. And that was the first sunrise. Wouldn't you have liked to have been there and saw that? What a beautiful sight that must have been. But there was somebody there that saw it all. Listen as we sing it for you. The first sunrise. Long ago near Jerusalem, a baby born in Bethlehem grew up and on the cross was crucified. In a tomb they laid the Lord, rolled the stone up on the door. They thought they had their problem sealed inside. I was the first to recognize the beauty of that first sunrise within the tomb of Jesus on that day. I beheld the risen lamb, and if you're wondering who I am, I'm the angel who rolled the stone away. Mary came at break of day, saw the stone was rolled away. For Jesus had rose just like he said. Fear not, Mary, he is gone. He left the tomb at early dawn. So why seek ye the life among the dead? I was the first to recognize the beauty of that first sunrise within the tomb of Jesus all that day. I beheld the risen lamb. 
If you're wondering who I am, I'm, I'm the angel who rolled the stone away. Yes, I'm, I'm the angel who rolled the stone away. Give the Lord a big hand. Praise Amen. the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, if you folks will notice, have that, I'll tell you, do something for me, would you? Everybody look at somebody and laugh out loud. <laughs> Some of you couldn't help it, could you? <laughs> oh, we love a smile. You know, we uh, uh, there's two things you can tell. If you'll notice, we don't have anything here to go by. We don't have a program rolled out. We have to rely on our memory. Now, there's two things you can tell when you're getting old. One of them, you start forgetting things. Yeah. And I forgot the other one. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot my wife's birthday two years in a row. Now, men, listen, that's a no-no. Oh, no. There's two things you better, if you don't want to get the doghouse, there's two things you better remember. You, uh, your wife's birthday and your anniversary. <laughs> So two years in a row, I forgot my wife, and I, I was really, you know, I, but I love to write poems. I wrote her a little poem, and she let me off the hook. <laughs> so if you men, if you get in that, in that shape and you get in the doghouse, you write to me sometime. I may send you a copy of this. <laughs> I'm going to share it with you. I hurried through my breakfast. I'd been late before. Don't forget what day this is, she told me at the door. All through the day I worried. What day could this be? Somehow I can't remember to save the likes of me. So I'll just have to play it safe. I know what I should do. I'll send a dozen roses and a special present too. You'll do it every time. Every time. I felt good when I got home. And I said, how was your day? Let's see. How was your day, my I son? felt secured when I got home. And uh, when I stepped inside, I said, how was your day, my sugar plum? Oh, great was her reply. I thank you for the roses and the present that you sent. I've had the happiest groundhog day that I have ever spent. <laughs> Folks, I believe, I believe he's the leading up, and, he, and, and he's, this song's going to fit my brother and me, and it'll fit a lot of you, too, if you'll be honest with yourself. Now, just be honest with yourself. This next song is going to fit a lot of you people. He's building this recitation up for this song. We toured a lot out in Oklahoma and Texas and Iowa, even New Mexico, out through that country. So we was coming in from about a five or six-a-day tour that was out in Oklahoma, and all of us would just give out. So I'd done a lot of the driving, so about 3 o'clock in the morning, uh, I seen the red, uh, blue light pulling me over, about 3 o'clock in the morning, pulling me over. And uh, they was all asleep, so I went out, and the state man was writing, uh, fixing to write me a ticket, had the book out and everything. He said, did you know you was on the left-hand side as much as you was the right out here? And I said, yes, sir. I said, my family's asleep in there, and uh, I didn't want to wake them up. Did you know your highways are tore all the pieces out here? And he said, that ain't no excuse. And I said, well, I sort of think it was. Because there wasn't nobody coming. When I, I'd get on my side, when there wasn't no, was somebody coming, I'd get on my side. So he's writing to me. He said, well, how long has it been since you had a ticket? I said, sir, I don't remember getting one. He said, well, it won't hurt to give you one then, will it? So he keeps writing. Anyway, I got back on the bus, and he told me to have a good night. And I said, I don't deserve that, but I'll, you have a good night too, sir. And I was just talking to myself going down the road, you know. Folks, he was man. mad. He did, wasn't just talking to himself. He was, man, he was mad. And he woke me up. I was sleeping behind him on the couch, on the bus. And I said, James, what in the world's the matter with you? He said, I got a ticket a while ago. I said, I don't see why I have to do all the driving now. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I said, James, let me see the ticket. So I looked at it, and folks, listen. <laughs> It wasn't no traffic ticket. It was a religious track. That state man had pulled him over and tried to get him saved. 
And so when I went back to sleep, I give James told me that I, I went back to sleep, and when I woke up, the Lord started giving me this song. And I said, well, thank you, Lord, just for giving me a song that just fits me. But it didn't just fit me, folks. It was for everybody. And this will fit every one of you. And the name of it is Wore Out. And if you ever watched uh, Bill Gaither, uh, Jake Hess did this and said it was one of the best songs we had. He said he wished we had another one just like it. It sold more of his records than any he had done. <laughs> So some of you might have heard this if you watch Bill Gaither. Porter, Porter Wagner did it, and he passed away two weeks later. Yeah. He did it on a CD. Hope you'll enjoy it. The war out. And when I get to your verse, I want you to raise your hand. Yeah. Now, I know some of you bashful. You don't want to raise your hand and let people know you wore out. So if you're here in that condition, you find somebody your verse fits and point toward them. <laughs> You come home at night, sit down for a bite, and you're wore out. You're hardly able to get up from the table, cause you're wore out. You crawl into bed, sleep like you're dead, cause you're wore out. In the morning you wake up, you can't seem to get up. Are you around? But when we get to heaven with Jesus our King, ten million years and still fresh as the spring, we'll be happy and free, and our bodies won't be wore out. Now this verse here will probably fit more of you ladies than it does men. So I'm going to dedicate it to you ladies. You get up on Sunday, you dread to see Monday, cause you wore out. You go sit in the church, and your back start to hurt, cause it's wore out. The choir starts to sing, and you can't feel a thing, cause you wore out. You pray the sermon and the song won't last too long. Cause you wore out. Now what do you mean by that? This is your verse. You go out for a drive in the car with your wife and it's wore out. The car that is. She starts to worry, tells you not to hurry. This car is wore out. You don't know where you're at. The old tower is going to plant cause it's wore out. From the sound of the motor, you'll soon have to tow her cause she's wore out. But when we get to heaven with Jesus our King, we won't have to worry about anything. We'll be happy and free. Nothing there will ever be. War out. Aren't you glad of that? Give the Lord another hand. Okay, we're going to get one. We can feature the brother Johnny here. He, he, he come with our group probably at least 50 years ago and did some of our first CDs before our children began to play. And uh, so we're going to get one. He features the banjo a little bit here. And, uh, and clap your hands and be happy. How many knows you need to praise the Lord in the house of the Lord? He says he lives in our praises. And give him another big hand to praise the Lord. And jo give John. You're going to be. We wrote this back in the 80s, Russell. You're going to sit down and sing it? Yeah. Okay, he's getting a little give out on me. Anyway, uh, we wrote this back in the 80s, and uh, you might have heard it. They gave us a Dove Award in Nashville for this being Song of the Year. The Inspirations put it number one in Southern Gospel Music. Then the, the, the bluegrass labels that we were on, it went real good for us, too. So it's called, They're Holding Up the Ladder. And uh, Johnny, you just, you, you, you want to go ahead and listen? They're 
holding up the ladder that I'm pounding on. I'm pounding up the ladder and I'm going home at the top of the ladder. Oh, what joy there will be and the angels are holding up this ladder for me. As I climb the gospel ladder, always heeding every sign, I know my Savior's with me and He's teaching me to climb. Every day that I'm climbing, there's a battle for me. Every step on the ladder is another victory. They're holding up the ladder that I'm climbing on. I'm climbing up the ladder and I'm going home. At the top of the ladder, oh, what joy there will be. And angel, they're holding up this ladder for me. mansion being built for me somewhere in glory land and the land that I'm climbing is a part of the plan I can hear the angels beckoning keep climbing don't stop there's a crown of life awaiting for you when you reach the top they're holding up the ladder that I'm climbing on I'm climbing up the ladder and I'm going home at the top of the ladder oh what joy there will be and the angel they're holding up this ladder for me Well, come on, you Christian soldiers, show the world your light can shine. Get on the gospel ladder and don't be afraid to climb. Can't you hear the angels cheering? Soon the battle will be war, and we'll celebrate the victory when we reach that other shore. They're holding up the ladder that I'm climbing on. I'm climbing up the ladder and I'm going home. At the top of the ladder, oh, what joy there will be. And the angels are holding up this ladder for me. And the angels are holding up this ladder for me. Yes, they are. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand. You know, we was just over in Wilkesboro not long ago, about two weeks ago, I think it was, they put us in the Hall of Fame over here in North Wilkesboro. We drove over. A couple of, me and Russell got to come. The other brother didn't get to come, but they put us in the Bluegrass Hall of Fame here. And I didn't, hadn't heard about that in a long time. And, but anyway, they put several in there, and it included the Easter Brothers about two or three weeks ago. So we're just glad for that. I got a song here that uh, me and my son Jeff, uh, how many of you heard of Jeff and Sherry Easter? Y'all heard of them? That's my son, and me and him did a, a CD together called Like Father, Like Son. And uh, and we'll put it on Facebook. Now, folks, listen, if, if you don't want it to go all over the world, you better not put it on Facebook. Anything you put on that, it better be good. Because I had a teacher, he was looking at this song, me singing this song in Georgia. At my son's homecoming in Georgia, we have once a year. And he, uh, he said, I'm a teacher in a university in the country, Norway. And I pastor a little Baptist church over here, and I'm a country music singer. And if you wrote that song that you're singing with your son Jeff and Sherry, then I desire to come over to the States and look you up, and me and you sit down and talk. And the Lord gave me this song in about ten minutes. I was reading in the book of Revelations, where he said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if any man hear my voice and open his heart's door, I'll come into him and I'll sup with him and he with me. I'd read that and probably preached on it two or three times. But it just stuck out with me. You know, he's not just on the right-hand side of the Father looking at this service this morning. But he's in you. If you're born again, he's in you. He said his voice would hear. So I said, he's in my feet when I'm walking and my tongue when I'm talking. And so the Lord gave me this song. And I hope you'll, uh, this one's in A, Johnny. It's in A chord. And, it's, and, then, and then, too, uh, I don't know where God found you living at, but when I was 15 years old, they kept me in jail. I'm, now, listen, I, I, I'm, 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 I don't like my past life until I met Jesus Christ. I'm ashamed of every bit of it until Jesus Christ came in my life and gave me a song to sing and made me glad of who I am. 
But uh, 15 years old, they kept me in jail till 16 to, tr to send me to central prison with hard labor on a chain gang for 10 to 15 years sentence. And I went through some lonely years, and I went through some bad years. If you want to get some, uh, if you don't think Satan's got it out there, just people keep serving Satan, they'll find out what he's got for them. But I found, thank God I found out one day that Jesus Christ, and that's where I heard about Jesus. So if that's the only way that I could have ever heard about Jesus Christ, I believe I'd have went right back there and did it again. I told some doctors in hospital one time that, and they treated me like kings. I, everybody wants to hear about Jesus. I don't care who they are, and sometimes God leads us. You might get sick and go to the hospital, maybe not be nothing wrong with you. Maybe you need to be a witness to the doctors. I've done it many times. Anyway, uh, I lived a lot, lot of lonely, so that's where the song came from. The years that I lived there was lonely years and bad years. But I'll tell you what, I'm glad, thank God, he's in my feet when I'm walking. He's in my tongue when I'm talking now. I'm glad of who he made me today. Jesus is living in me. How many's got him living in you? How many's glad about it? Praise the Lord. Yeah, I believe you'll like the message in this song. Lonely years, I had lived them. Life had no meaning till I heard about Calvary. When I knelt down in prayer, my heart met me there. Now Jesus, Jesus is living in me. Yes, he is. He's in my feet. When I'm walking And my tongue When I'm talking In my eyes And now I Can see He's in the songs That I'm singing In my heart His joy is ringing Jesus Is living In me through the valleys he has brought me to the top of the mountain and over life's troubled sea now i sing for his glory song that tells the great story called jesus is living in me yes he is church he's in my feet when i'm walking in my tongue when i'm talking in my eyes and now i can see he's in the songs that i'm singing in my heart his joy is ringing Jesus is living in me. Yes, my Jesus, he's living in me. me. Yes, he is. Amen. Praise the Lord. I tell you what, if he's really living in you, give the Lord another big hand today here. Amen. Jesus, he's worthy. We've got one here now that we're going to get. Uh, I believe it's my brother Russell's favorite song I've ever sung, that the Easter Brothers wrote. This will be his favorite. And people like Daley Vincent in Nashville does it. Uh, Rhonda Vincent recorded it. And several people is doing the Easter Brothers songs now in Nashville, and Russell says, out of all the songs we've wrote, we wrote this about our daddy years ago. It's called A Heart That'll Never Break Again. You want to say something up before we start, Russell? Uh, you want to say anything on that song? Yeah. Yeah, this song here, I remember it like it was yesterday when the Lord started giving me this song. There's a tear came with every, every word of it. I knew that the Lord was giving it to me beyond a shadow of any doubt. And he's got a way he wants the world to hear about it. And that's why he wor he works with the Easter Brothers and has been all through these years to get get the word to somebody out there that needs a message. And brother, I'm going to tell you, he's, he's given me some good ones. And out of all the, there's a man uh, asked me one time, Mr. Easter, out of all the songs you've had right, what's your favorite? It should have took me at least 30 minutes 
because I've got so many. But this one here immediately came to my mind as my favorite song. And I hope that you'll enjoy it. And I want to do it for everybody here that's got a loved one that's going on to be with Jesus. Because it ain't going to be long, folks. I, uh, I heard a guy say the other day, said, Jesus don't come real soon. We'll have to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah because I think he's real, just at the door. Amen. Hope you'll enjoy this. Heart that will never break. And we again. got we got one of you on here that's going to uh, sing this. And he, he really loves this song. Jerry loves this song. So he's going to sing. Yep. This is my favorite song of all time, folks. And I'm honored to be able to help the guys sing one. And, and we'd like to dedicate to Johnny Wilcox back there. I know he loves the Easter Brothers. I believe he said the first time he heard me sing was in 1957 with uh, over here somewhere in some church. So that's been a long time. So we hope you enjoy it. If you've got a loved one to go to be with, it's done going on to be with Jesus. And my wife just, my wife's uh, daddy just passed away. And so... We ain't always going to be around here, but it's good to know, pray God, where they're going when they leave here. Then, So we hope if you've got a loved one in heaven, think about them while we're saying this song. They'll never have another broken heart. I know you're here today, and you've got to be ahead of some, even I don't care how young you are. Somewhere along the way, Satan's managed to break your heart in some way. So we're going to a place, thank God, where there'll never be another broken heart. No wheelchairs up there. No... Uh, funeral homes to put away the dead up there. Folks, we're going to a place, thank God, where there'll be joy, peace, and love forever. Listen to the message this song. A heart that will never break again. I remember standing at my daddy's bedside And the tears filled up the wrinkles on his face as I held his withered hand, he softly whispered, Son, I'm going to live in a better place. Now have I that will never be with your God. Now have legs that will never ache with pain. will never age and wither, and a heart that will never break again. I have often heard and read about that city, where with Jesus we shall live forever more. There are mansions in construction for my dwelling, and the streets of gold will run by my front door, and all the eyes of the blind will then be opened as they join the victory march with the lame. And the devil who's never heard the roar of thunder listen to it now they'll rejoice to hear the Savior call their name and I'll have I that will never feel with your God yes we will I'll have legs that will never ache with pain I'll have hands that will never age and wither And a heart that will never break again I'll have hands that will never age and wither And a heart that will never break again Yes, we will, church. Amen. Give the Lord another big hand. Praise the Lord. Thank I'll tell you, you what. We used to write all kinds of songs before the Lord came in our life. 
and we was uh, we was uh, special guests on a lot of programs like Don Reno and Red Smiley over in Roanoke, Virginia, and they were a blessing to us, and we was recording on the King label like they were, and God blessed us with a lot of songs, uh, real good songs like that, and I tell you what, Russ, let's do uh, right now. Our time's running out a little bit, and I def definitely want to introduce this song like this. Okay. Uh, it's, it's called "Thank You, Lord, for Your Blessings on Me." A lot of Amen. folks has heard that, but you don't know where it come from. And lots of the big preachers. Oh, okay. We've got. We're gonna get Johnny to do a special. Now we'll do this one next. Johnny, you want to get my guitar and come do this song? Okay. He's gonna. He's gonna get a song here for you. quite a bit of writing. Uh, my wife, today is her birthday. Friday was my birthday. Wednesday was her anniversary. So it's all together. I was married Friday. I was married, uh, not Wednesday. I was married 82. No, back up here. Hmm. 78 years. No, that's not right. <laughs> well, I'm wore out. Yeah. Yeah. 58 years. Vice West. Thank the Lord that God's been awful good to us. I thought of these boys and worked with them back in the late 50s, uh, early 60s, and the early 70s or late 60s and early 70s. I love these boys. It's just like brothers to me. I've been around them a lot. Every time they come around, I try to pick a little with them. I don't pick at them. I pick with them. So, <laughs> I'm going to do this. This is a song that I wrote. I got the inspiration from my wife. One called Bang It On. The sun is shining, it's cool and quiet. That's the way I like it, bang it on. It's a good time to pray, meditate. My Lord is here to bless us all today. Bring it on, bring it on. That's the way I like it. Bring it on. I ain't used to this guitar. I'm not, I'm not, you get an instrument in your hand, you're not used to it. It's hard to pick. Took a friend of mine to church the other night. I heard him say he would like to make it right. When they gave the honor call, he hit that altar. And he said, that's the way I like it. Bring it on. Bring it on. Bring it on. That's the way I like it. Bring it on. 
Now the Spirit of God had moved on the soul lady. I'd say she was in her 90s, I don't know. All at once, she jumped right up and shouted. And she said, that's the way I like it. Bring it on. Bring it on. Bring it on. That's the way I like it. Bring it on. This, this would be the, I'd like to introduce this song because a lot of people don't know really where it came from. And uh, I know I was in the service, I don't know if you've heard of uh, C.T. Uh, Townsend. Townsend. Uh, he started revival out in Burlington uh, not too long ago, for a couple of years back. And he growed so much, I think when he was in uh, Bristol not long ago, I think 500 people got, gave their heart to cry. And he got me to sing this song with him when he came to Mount Airy to school. <clears throat> and uh, uh, 39 young people got saved there. It was a youth rally. And uh, anyway, it's called Thank You, Lord, for Your Blessings on Me. And a lot of people don't know where the song come from. And uh, when I served that time, when I was just, you know, I went there when I was 16 years old, just a, just a boy, just weighed about 100 pounds. Uh, and uh, just, just a young one. And then they, they had to send me from central prison to Halifax County down there, Ronald Gravis, North Carolina, to a, a prison where men had been in there for 20 and 30 years. And the warden in central prison said, now, son, you better get you a weapon to take care of yourself because uh, them people will harm you. They'll ruin you if, if you ain't got a weapon to take care of yourself. Life scared me to death because back then I had never heard nothing like that. And uh, <clears throat> it just wasn't there. And uh, anyway, changing prison buses, some going in, some coming out. My buddy recognized me. He gave me his knife. He had coming home. And uh, so I'd sleep with that knife in under my pillow. And uh, so three, you work 10 hours, not even allowed to put your foot on the shovel. Uh, seven of us could load one of these big dump trucks building highways in seven minutes. Seven of us could load that truck because we weren't allowed to put our foot on the shoulder. You had to go like this in the hot sun pits uh, uh, ten hours a day. And then so I basically wasn't used to that, so I'd be just plumb knocked out. Well, nothing happened about three days, but the third day here this big muscle guy came. And it was 50 in a cell block, each cell block. So anyway, they, he was pulling me off of the top bunk where I was sleeping and I had my knife open under the pillow and I said well if I can get him the rest of them will leave me alone and maybe so I tried my best to get him right here that's where I was and I did it hard as I could and I seen some blood and he dropped me and took off running so I thought maybe I got him good enough they would leave me alone but about four or five nights later here come him and another one one got my knife hand and the other one got this hand I mean, they had me, and they were putting me off the top bunk. And folks, listen, before I even though never been to church before, never heard a preacher preach before this, didn't know God, I didn't know who the devil was. All I know, I was just messed up young. So all at once, looking back on my life, an angel that God had put in that prison camp, good as I'm standing here to guard over me, knowing what I was going to do today, Young guy, curly, dark hair, stuck right to his head. Looked like he lived in Florida all his life. Even these right down here, the blood looked, looked like muscles. He hit one of them guys, knocked him down. He hit the other one, knocked him down. They were crawling on their wood. They were big guys. This guy wasn't that big, but he was just all muscles. And I believe he was an angel. Well, as good as I'm standing here, I don't believe no human could have done that. They were running to get away from me, and he said, you touch him anymore while I'm here, and I'll roll your head out to the guards next time. So that let me know God. And then he said, James, you just be my friend and teach me to play the guitar. So that's where this song come from, folks. I come When I first come home, uh, some of the very first scripts, when I got, uh, the, uh, Brother C.S. Grogan, a, a preacher, came there f to, from Sanford, North Carolina, started revival. Ninety inmates got saved out of 115. I didn't get saved, but my buddy had taught me out there to go out there and hear the preacher for the first time. And my mom always said, son, look people in the face and you can tell whether they're telling you the truth. 
So I got in the mess hall behind all the heads back in the mess hall to hear this preacher for the first time. I didn't want to go because they come in in nice suits and driving brand new cars. And I tell my buddy, what could they possibly say I want to hear? But I, he taught me into going. He had got out there and got saved and taught me into going. So when I got behind the head, I, I caught that preacher's eyes right straight in the eyes. And I was going to look at him. And when I, he, before he spoke one word, I saw some tears coming down through here. And I said, whatever that man says, I'm going to believe. The very first words come out of his mouth. It says, I know somebody that loves you. And I punched my buddy and I said, he must know my mama. He said, James, you ain't talking about your mama. He says, I know somebody that loves you and he won't call you with that number you are. He knows your name. And his name is Jesus. And I looked at my buddy. I said, who's Jesus? He said, James. That's the one that went on the sand pits and can't hardly have, fixing to have a sunstroke. Can't hardly make it. All at once the rain comes up. And we, they have to put us and give us a break. Said his name. We call him. We look up and say, thank you, J.C. His real name is Jesus Christ. He came all the way from heaven down here. Gave his life. That meant you wouldn't have to live in a place like this. You know what? The Word of God says, God dealt to every man, boy and girl, a measure of faith. And I believe that that measure of faith, that one day, when you hear that word, it would, your faith would kick in and you put works with it. See, faith is dead till you put works with it. So that when you speak it into existence, Jesus, I want you in my heart. You're putting works with your faith that comes alive and your name goes in the Lamb's Book of Life in Heaven right then. Give Him a big hand of praise if you believe that today. So that's why that I'm here, and that's where this song come from. I remember when I didn't have shoes to wear to school. I remember when they'd keep me after school and give me and Russell eight a garment to wear, because we were very poor. Three-room house, no lights, and no running water uh, path outside. And that's how we was raised, very poor. But I want you to know, I had a heating and cooling business for about 40 years after I came out of prison. I had no education. We drank when we was young. And, and they kicked us out of school for being drunk. A lot of people wonder why you sing gospel songs. We, we served the devil and sung all the other songs before we was even teenagers and we were alcoholics. Had to have it. That's why. Besides that, when we went to a country music, biggest country music label in America, King Records, George Jones, Patsy Clines, all of the, a lot of big stars. Uh, James Brown, the rock and roll man. We give James our dad to record because they had him clean. And they asked us would we record. That's reading my member, the rock and roll, James Brown. And we gave him our day because they had him clean. Said tomorrow he might not be clean. And the Easter Brothers, when we sung our first song, they said, we'll put you on top if you'll sing love songs. And we looked at them, all three brothers, and said, listen, we're singing the greatest love song that you can sing about Jesus Christ. Who else died for you? And we, ever since then, we've sung gospel songs. We did all the other before. I don't have anything. Yeah, I, I got good friends in Nashville. Ricky Skaggs, I believe he's a wonderful Christian man. He makes his living singing country music. And I don't down that. But the Easter brother said, Lord, if you'll take the taste of whiskey and peels away from us, we'll just sing gospel songs for you. And we've stuck through it 62 years. He's 88, now I'm 86, Ed's 84, and we're still up above the ground. Thank God, praising God. So, amen. Give the Lord a big hand. Praise the Lord. So, that, that's where this song came from. And brother, the brother Townsend got me to sing. He said, Brother Easter, I want you to sing this with my choir. And I figured he'd have a little choir. And he had 325 in his choir. He had 2,500 in the school. I couldn't hardly find a seat. My son said, son, Daddy, he wants to sing a song. Will you, you find, get up and find him? I said, son, I'm not getting out of my seat. I said, I'm in the top of the gym now, and there's 100 people hunting my seat. I said, I'm not look, going to hunt the preacher. So he called a preacher, and the preacher come and found me and told me he wanted me to sing it. But anyway, it's this song here. Even, even he sings this song in his ministry. And, I, and it's a theme sung in the country Jamaica. They let the children sing this song, and then they go into class. It's a praise song. Instead of a prayer, they do that. So I hope you enjoy, and we'll come into the close of the service. And I'd like to say this. He wasn't ashamed of us. He could have called one angel. Would have tore him off that cross. But he knew that we wouldn't be here today with our joyful if he did that. 
My joy is full today because of one thing. When they went to Jerusalem, there where he they were supposed to be in his tomb, it was empty. Now you go where any other gods they're claiming they're their gods, and they'll be dust to ashes or something. They're gone. But I know one that's still living. He talks to me every day. Keeps me on my right path. His name is Jesus. And that's where this song come from. While the world looks upon me As I struggle along They say I have nothing But they are so wrong In my heart I'm rejoicing How I wish they could see Thank you, Lord or your blessing on me. There's a room up above me. I've a good place to sleep. There's food on my table, shoes on my feet. You gave me your love, Lord. And a fine family. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. Would you stand with us? Oh, you've been sitting there a long time. And I'd like for you to sing the chorus of that song with us, Sarah, if you would. I know time, but listen. We don't give Jesus too much of our time, just a little on Sunday and Wednesday night. We don't give him much time. But I'll tell you what, he give us a whole lot of his time. So I'd like for her to sing that with I know that that you could sing it with us. There's a roof up above me. Sing it with me. I'll hear you sing. Go ahead and sing. There's a roof up above me. A good place to sleep. A good place to sleep. Food on my table. There's food on my table. Shoes on my feet. Shoes on my feet. You gave me your love, Lord. You gave me your love, and Lord. A fine family. And a fine family. Everybody now. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. While you're standing, there's a lot of people right here would meet you here at the altar and pray with you. And you know when to get saved is when God is calling you. I believe a lot of people went to the altar when mom and daddy was calling them. I really do. I believe there's people in the house of God all over America today that's not really have the born again experience. If you come when that, you know what? When I came to the Lord, I believe my jacket was going just like that. He's a heart dealer, and he lets you know when he wants you. A lot of people go sometimes because mom and daddy wants them to, or brother and sisters, or a friend. They go for that reason. One come to my store not long ago, he couldn't get off of the dope. From, York, Pennsylvania, and wandered in my little store. They moved here to get him away from the crowd. And I, he, I seen him weeping in my store because Christ is in that store. And I seen him weeping, crying. I said, "Are you saved?" He said, "Well, I believe I am." And I said, "Well, you'd know if you're saved, sir." And he said, "Well, I went for mom and dad, and he said I said that prayer." I said, "Listen, I see tears in your eyes now. That's the heavenly Father drawing you." Now, you go for yourself now because you're tired of sin. You're tired of sin, aren't you? He said, yeah, I'm on dope and I want to get off of it. He knelt down with a chair there and got saved. And that boy's life changed just like that. When he left that store, he wouldn't. He got saved the first time for his mom and daddy. you got to go for yourself. If God's dealing with your heart today, listen, don't be ashamed of him. He was not ashamed. He said, if you're ashamed of me before this evil generation I'll be ashamed of you before my heavenly father that's his word that's not my opinion opinions breaks churches up but if you're ashamed of him he'll be ashamed of you in heaven he won't. that's what the word of God says is that right brother and these people here will meet you here most of all Jesus said we're two gathers he's here he's here if you could open your spiritual eyes you could see him saying come on home I got something for you try me to see if I'm not good just try me just try him. See if I'm not good if you've never been saved. 
He'll take a curse out of that life and put a blessing in it. Said He'll overtake you every day of your life with blessings. So I'll do one more song, verse of that song, and, I'll, and if you will sing it with us. And, and if you if you don't know him, why don't you just come and try him? If he's dealing with you, won't you do that? And for anything, any prayer you want, I mean, he's a healer, just like a savior. He gives you daily benefits when you come to him. He adds daily benefits every day of your life to your life. Not only saves you, but the book of Deuteronomy. Read about the 28th chapter of the book of Deuteronomy. If you hearken unto him, he'll save not only you, but your children and your children's children. That's a promise. They won't stray from it. He'll bring them back. Although... I'm not wealthy, and these clothes, they're not new. I don't have much money, but Lord, I have you. To me, that's all that matters, though the world may not see. Thank you, Lord. For your blessings on me. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord another big hand of praise if you love Him today. And listen, if you didn't accept Him, if you didn't feel like accepting Him today, even at home, when you go home. I, I had a, tra a, a tractor-trailer driver. I had a program on 100,000-watt station in uh, Danville, Virginia, down that way. And he was in the fancy Gap Mountains, plumb up here 100 miles away. He said, I just heard your testimony, Mr. Easter. And I looked, and I'd lost my brakes coming down fancy Gap Mountain. And he said, uh, I went to pray, and I said, God... If you let this truck get to the foot of the mountains, I just heard his testimony. And don't run me off of this mountain. I'm yours. It's the foot of this mountain. I'll give my life to you. He said, Brother Easter, you got to the foot of the mountain. I don't know how I got there. We're no I kept gearing it down. And I got down and said, when that tra tra trailer pulled over a little bit and leveled out and stopped, I got out on the front wheel of that thing, gave my heart to Jesus, and said, I just thank you for th that you was on the radio that day and touched me. So, folks, he's real. And we've had a en really enjoyed being with y'all today, and uh, hope maybe we come back sometime. P appreciate Johnny being with us, and uh, so brother, I'm going to get you c come and finish. If you got anything you want to add to what I'm saying today, God bless you. He's a sister pastor. We call him up here. Well, it's good to, to have him with us today. I enjoyed it, and it's good to that Brother Easter was able to come and